What is up, y'all? This is Andy with Poster Grind, and today we're going to make some awesome three-dimensional type in Illustrator, as well as making our own metallic gradient from scratch so that we can then colorize our three-dimensional type and make it look really trippy, almost tie-dye with a metallic twist. So without further ado, let's dive on in. <laughs> Let's go hit up our ellipse tool by hitting L on the keyboard. Make yourself a perfect circle by holding down the shift key. Now we're gonna be working with a stroke, so what we wanna do is cross out our foreground and then go to our stroke. And on the stroke, we're gonna hit the little gradient down there. And now all we have to do is increase our stroke size to create a circle. So I'm just gonna keep hitting Increase size until we have a perfect circle. Now going to our gradients, let's go ahead and create this metallic effect. And what that means is we're gonna have to work on our gradient slider and go from white to black, white to black, white to black. Holding down the option key, make a copy and drag to the right. And then the same thing on the black point, we're gonna hold down option, drag to the left, and we're just gonna keep doing this until we have nine black and white points. And then I wanna have white on the ends. You can kinda of eyeball it to make these all even. Now that's not the gradient effect that we're looking for. We want to go to this one here, so we wanna to go to apply gradient along stroke. Now we have this really cool blended metallic circle. Go up to object, expand appearance and then we're going to go ahead and make this a little bit smaller holding down the shift key go back to your lips so we're going to hit l on the keyboard go to our ellipse tool and we're going to make a perfect circle the exact same size and circle as the metallic one and i'm going to zoom in just to make sure it's perfect and i'm going to zoom out then i'm going to work with our four color and we're going to make this one white just for now. I'm gonna drag this down and then we can go to our gradient. And I already have a pre-selected gradient that I pulled from the library. If you wanna do the same thing, all you need to do is go to your swatches panel and then go to the library section and then go to your gradients and you can choose a number of different ones that you might wanna experiment with. But for today, I already have one that I'm already interested in using and it's gonna be this magenta orange yellow version. But the one thing I do wanna to do to this is add some white. So holding down option on my keyboard, I'm gonna create another point on the gradient slider, and then I'm just gonna turn this white by bringing these color panels down all the way to white. And I'm just going to expand it a little bit, and I'm gonna do the same thing over here on the left. Holding down option, creating a new point, and then I'm just going to my color panel and dropping these down to white. And that's just gonna help with the highlights on our three-dimensional object. So I'm just gonna drag this down. Actually, before we do anything, I'm gonna turn this on its side just a little bit. Now we'll need to make another copy of our metallic circle. So I'm gonna hold down Option and just drag another copy down. From here, we're gonna adjust our blending modes. But before we do, I'm just gonna make sure that we're gonna send this one to the back by right-clicking, arrange, send to back. And then on this middle one, we're gonna drop it on top. And then we're going to go to our properties panel, go to opacity. And then on the blending mode where it says normal, we're gonna drop this all the way down to difference. Now we're gonna drop our other circle on top of that circle. And then we're gonna right click, arrange, bring to front. And then on that same one, we're going to change the blending mode by going to opacity. And then we're gonna change this one to exclusion. If you guys have learned anything up until this point, please hit that like button. I really appreciate it. And now we have this really cool blended metallic-y 
gradient that we can use as a material in our 3D object. Now for our 3D object, I'll be using some typography. I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard and then I'm just gonna type something out. Now what I wanna do is move around our type. So I'm gonna go up to type, create outlines, object, ungroup, and now we can move around our letters individually. Now I'm just kind of freestyling a little bit so you can do basically whatever you want. And then once you have something you like, we're going to just group those together. And then we're going to change the color from black to white. And then going to your 3D and materials panel, if you don't have it open and you're looking for it, you can find it through your windows and just make sure that that's populated. Then we're gonna to go to object, extrude, and then on extrude, go to your presets and go to front. The next thing is we're going to inflate it. So we're gonna to go to inflate and then on inflate, you can mess around with your depth or whatever you like until you see something that works for your particular object. Now let's go to materials and in materials, we're gonna to go to metallic, increasing the metallic and then playing around with the roughness. Now let's go to graphics and let's drop in our newly created gradient. But first let's make sure that it's grouped. So I'm gonna to go to object, group. And now let's go ahead and place that in the materials. From here, be sure to click on your three dimensional object and then click on the material. Now we can increase the size on with the scale and the rotation. But let's make sure that it shows up somewhere on our 3D object. That looks cool. Now you can add another one by clicking on your gradient and just start placing these wherever you want and mess around with the scale and rotation. Then you can go back down to our original material and mess around with the metallic or roughness. Then when you have something you're liking, we can move to the next step, which is our lighting. And if you wanna add a shadow, we can go ahead and do that by unclicking or clicking and then distance from object. And then our height will or decrease that. So I'm just gonna decrease it so that it's hardly any shadow. And then you can mess around with the intensity. Then when you have something that you like, let's go ahead and render it. So what you wanna do is turn on ray tracing and then quality high and then hit render. All right, that came out really cool. And there you go, guys. You can go ahead and copy and paste these into Photoshop or whatever you wanna use them. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you liked it, go ahead and hit the like button and I'll see you on the next one.